what exactly does trend do? It's positive. And then along with that, if people are deciding to take the step of going on trend, because they obviously are, what do they need to be careful of? And what are the potential long-term ramifications or short-term that they need to keep in mind if they choose to do trend? Because guys are talking about trends super liberally. Like it's just, it's cool. It's trend. Because it works really well as an anabolic and an in androgenic compound. Can so, you explain those two a little bit to us? Sure. So if something's anabolic, that means it helps build muscle. And if something's androgenic, that's more of the secondary side effects, uh, sex drive, body hair growth is on balding. It can't accelerate balding because of uh, DHT. And But mostly trend is very, very anabolic at lower doses. Mm. But it's not, in my opinion, not a beginner one. It's something you should do once you've had at least testosterone and maybe something like EQ is another light one that I think is relatively safe or premium and if it's real is relatively safe comparatively to these. Trend is just, it got so popular as uh, culturally, just every gym rat was always like, yeah, you gotta take trend or do you, you know how you meet the big guy in the gym and <laughs> yeah. talk about it, that, that's the go-to. And, and all these kids ask me the same thing. It's like, oh, I'm on this much of trend. I was like, why? What have you done before? Oh, it's my first cycle and I'm doing like three things and it just, it blows my mind that they don't, nobody really researches anything. They just ask random people in the gym because they have a great physique. Mm -hmm. And and I'm guilty of that as well. Like the, my first introduction to this was making a friend at the gym who was really big and asking, and it started about natural stuff and then he told me about other things and uh, it was just an exploration from there. But I then got really into researching it myself. And then, you know, with the influence of Patrick Arnold actually made the choice to go back to school for chemistry to really understand it. And then hopefully educate people from my position of which I feel I have credibility versus somebody who's just big in the gym. Yeah. So, the, uh, the, the common opinion about like low testosterone, um, or I guess in a, um, not an effect, but people say that they're tired so that their testosterone must be low. Um, it seems like that's the, uh, the correct opinion of that uh, side effect. But like Encima was pointing out, there's some people that will show their blood work and they have low testosterone, but they're still shredded. They're still, they seem to have high energy. Why do you think it varies so much from person to person? Genetics play a huge role in a lot of things. There are, I have friends that I am extremely jealous of that walk around at 6%, they eat whatever they want. They, he's they, across the table from you, by the way. Got it. <laughs> he's a new friend. <laughs> yeah. And he's right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, genetics just control everything. You know, like, um, for example, and I don't know how substantiated this is. This is an educated guess, and I believe it's been around the internet. Uh, he, he was a fisherman and weighed 185 before he ever touched a weight. So people speculate that his genetics may possibly, he might have lower, naturally lower myostatin levels versus someone else, mm -hmm. which is the reason why he was able to get so big so quickly. Um, from 180, I mean, if you're starting at 185 and you've never touched a weight, that's a pretty big base, mm -hmm. you know? So at his age, and he was young, it, I, he was either 19 or, or early 20s, never. And so people underestimate the power of genetics and some people can have zero or low testosterone and just stay ripped because their met metabolism is really fast or they can hold on to muscle better. Like th there's just so many different pathways by which your body maintains its mm -hmm. muscle mass that it doesn't just come down to testosterone. There's other things, there's other factors that help you have energy or stay ripped or, and a lot of it is just having the attitude. I'm sure you, you probably just have a good attitude about yourself and have confidence and know that, you know, I'm, I'm, I look this way, I'm going to look this way. I train for this and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of variables, but genetics is a big one.
Yeah. And re- real quick, um, the because we meant we we talked about how trend was like effective, but I also like what are the like what do guys need to think about if they choose to go down the road of currently using it, and what are the ramifications like down the road of using trend? It's extremely suppressive, way more suppressive than testosterone because all of the 19 nors, which mean they don't have a methyl group on the 19th carbon, mm-hmm. all of those are vi- are much more suppressive and harder to bounce back from. And then long-term, I think it would be more of the plaque buildup because it's such a more powerful compound. And especially if it doesn't aromatize. Mm -hmm. So if things aromatize easily, that's better for you, not from a physique standpoint, but it's health-wise because you're getting estrogen still in your body, okay. where trend would probably lower your estrogen more. So then if you're taking even D-ball, because D-ball aromatizes very easily. Mm-hmm. So it, does that answer your question? Yeah. Trend, uh, <clears throat> I think one of the allures of the, something like trend balone is that it will increase your strength, it will increase your muscle mass, and you'll look leaner, again, mm-hmm. without a lot of changes to your diet. It's not like you're going to get shredded if you're a big fat dude and you take trend. But you'll cert- and if you train, you'll certainly look a lot different. And it doesn't take very long. Right. If you go on a cycle of testosterone, you've never taken testosterone before, but it's going to take a couple weeks for the lo- a longer acting ester to kind of pile up in your body. And then for you to have uh, higher testosterone, higher free testosterone, and for things to be favorable going in, in the right direction for a handful of weeks, maybe four or five weeks. I usually tell people, like, might not notice much for about four to six weeks. Right. With Trenbolone, if somebody took it for 15 days and they were in shape, you'd be like, whoa, <laughs> like, what the fuck happened? Like, if one of you guys took it, like, out of nowhere, I mean, it... It's a little hocus pocus. Like it, it, it's fucking. You know, we talked that one time on the podcast not not uh, not too long ago, uh, just a few weeks ago about devil pussy. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the devil steroid. Like this motherfucker's <laughs> calling you, <laughs> and it's like, yo, I got your number, bitch. You know, uh, where you at? There's, there's it there's, keeps calling you. You're like, no, I shouldn't take it. I shouldn't take it. <laughs> like he's talking about uh, like shutdown and stuff like that. Yeah, it can it can mess with your dick. Uh, it could shut down your testosterone levels for a long time. And the recovery from it could be could take a really long time. So you have to always think about an exit strategy out of these things. If you just took a little testosterone, I think, you know, if you took 200 milligrams, even if you took it for a year straight, I don't see a lot of negative side effects from that. But if you took a good amount of testosterone or a good amount of trenbolone for a year, good luck with the recovery on that. It's mm-hmm. going to be very, really difficult. Yeah. And I forgot to mention it also helped it can help burn fat due to its m- modulation of glucocorticosteroid receptor. So it does affect that, which can help with carbs going into your muscles rather mm. than storing as fat. So, so it can get, give you that leaner look because of that. I forgot to say that. Okay. Wow. I, I mean, yeah, it sounds awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the allure. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's also, what, oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. And, Normally, it's acetate. The most common found one is trend acetate, which is a very quick ester. And if you're doing it three times a week, <laughs> sorry, that's my so, dog. That's, that's okay. Christina. Can we can we get her on camera real quick? Oh yeah, be sure. Come here, baby. Yeah, scoop her up. This is Christina. Oh, oh, hello. Such Say a hi. Kitty. She travels <laughs> with me everywhere, so she's our little buddy for today. Why yeah. is she traveling with you? What's going on? She's a. I hate flying, and this is an uh, adult onset claustrophobia. Mm. So instead of taking medication, she keeps me calm, and, oh, I, that's and cool. I can uh, not have to wor- rely on something else that to keep me calm. So she's an amazingly trained dog, man. Yeah, she's she's, so good. she's super smart. She knows <laughs> hand commands. She knows everything. So so you hi to everybody, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel because we continue to bring you. Peak content on this channel. Obviously, you guys are here. You guys have watched the whole video. So like, comment, subscribe. All right. See you later.